you for welcoming me today. Uh, it's a great honor to speak, uh, to speak with you. Um, you know what? I do think we need a revolution. I'm not talking about a violent revolution. I'm more talking about a state of mind revolution. Because we have borrowed almost everything. Oceans, the earth, climate, everything. Wastes are piling up everywhere. Millions of people could die because of that. We know that already some islands today are endangered because of climate changes. We know that hundreds of millions of people may have to migrate in the coming decades and will be all of us hurt, you know, concerned by these big changes. So definitely we need something, we need the world to change. Today we see every week hundreds of thousands, if not millions of students and families, you know, on the streets, skipping school, asking for changes, demonstrating, hoping to get some contact with political leaders, and these people do want a change. And today, fear keeps us all in line. We need a change. We need a change because we thought that capitalism would solve everything. But the thing is that if capitalism allows to borrow the future, and if we can borrow everything, capitalism does not factor in what we call externalities. So changes to come in the future. When you discount the future, this price of discounting is not in market prices. And the thing is that the Earth has no voice, has no union. We thought that we had two production factors, capital and labor. Actually, we have three. Capital, labor, and the Earth. So, the challenges are huge. They are huge because we need, at some point in time, to give a price to this negative future and factor this in, in the way we behave. So what do we need to do? Many things. Uh, of course, you know, climate change is one of these challenges. We need also, at some point in time, maybe 10 years, 20 years from today, but it will happen, to dismantle nuclear plants. We need to help migrations. We need to manage the waste we, we create. We need to clean up, to clean up, to clean up sorry, what we call the six continents. So many, many things to do. And this will cost hundreds of billions of US dollars and, uh, or euros. So we need to flip the perspective. What has happened recently in France was to focus on punitive taxation. So to tax people for the climate change. And we saw what happened in France. We saw the yellow vest, you know, demonstrating in the streets. So meaning that we have to do something different. And this big thing will require huge private and public investments. Let me tell you a story. 10 years ago, 11 years ago, I was the CEO of the stock exchange of Belgium. So I was one of the guys who could look at the crisis when the market collapsed. It was a huge market crash, you know? Market prices went down by what? 80, 90%? This was amazing. I never thought it would happen. <laughs> Suddenly, governments started to borrow money because they had to fight this crisis. And what happened is that the central banks, the people creating money after some years, decided to print money to finance this crisis. And do you know how much money has been created since the start of this crisis a decade ago? Almost 26 hundreds of billions of euros. That's one-fourth of the global wealth being created every year in the Eurozone. That would have been totally unthinkable, because using the printing machine to fight a crisis, you know, was something that nobody had done before the war. It has been done. So, how did it work? How did we create money to fight this crisis? Central banks, but this happened, you know, in the Eurozone and in some other countries, they bought public debt and in exchange they created 
money. They increased the money supply. So they created, you know, newly, freshly printed money to finance the economy. The thing is that we could use this technique to fight global change, to, you know, challenge, to address all the big challenges we are facing in the future. Because instead of asking central banks to buy public debt and to create money, we could ask governments to identify with the private sector what would be, what would be the right investments to be made on a national basis, on an international basis, at the continent level basis. And the idea would be to create a kind of a bank for climate change, a bank that would be able to issue you know, debt to finance these new productive investments. This debt could be transformed, like we did 10 years ago, into newly printed money in order to finance these huge investments. So the proposal today is quite easy to roll out because we did that in the past. That would be again to print money, but instead of printing money just to refinance governments, the idea would be to print money for specific climate change investments. This can be easily done. Of course, some people would say, you know, if we start to create money for climate change, that would increase interest rates. Interest rates are today at the lowest point since five centuries ago. It could create inflation because people are afraid that money printing could stimulate you know, inflation and prices would go up everywhere. No, inflation is so low that it's not in excess of 1%. That would create investments, productive investments, because many people think, you know, if we invest into climate change, you know, this will destroy wealth. This will even decrease the GDP, the wealth we create every year. That's the opposite. If we make investments, we can stimulate demand, create jobs, and some people in this country make the assumption, rightfully so, that up to 60,000 jobs could be created if money would be rightfully invested into climate change. That would be also an opportunity for cross-border investments because we do know that these issues cannot be handled at regional level. They cannot be handled at national level. They need to be considered at EU level, European level, Eurozone level, name it. And, that, and that, that's why the solution to print money for that would be the right one. Of course, the question would be, why don't we do that? It seems so easy to do. Because, because we are in a world of treaties. Eurozone treaties forcing governments today to decrease their debt level. So, of course, if the solution would, do, would be to increase debt, to finance you know, climate change and these new transitions, that would be in contradictions with the EU and Eurozone treaties. So a change of the treaties will be needed. But the reason we need to change the treaties is that since the interest rate is so low, at the lowest point since five centuries ago, the growth that will be created thanks to these new productive investments will always be higher than the interest rate. If we would do that today, we would borrow at no 30% of a percent every year while having 1% or 2% of growth. So even if we would do this, this changeover, that would stimulate the growth of our economies. But we need at some point in time to reconsider the treaties. And let me share with you one last point. Everything seems so complex. But after the war, in this country, in many countries, there were people able to rebuild an economy in less than 20 years. Everything was destroyed. And starting in 1945, we had almost 30 years of growth thanks to the vision of some politicians who put their own faith at stake in order to make this transition. And that's why today, we need to think outside of, out of the box. We need to consider money printing. We need to consider European banks for climate change. And more important, we need to spread the news. Thank you very much.